Hello, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I made this little beauty. Coming up next. So some of you may be aware I'm actually embarking on a bigger project this year to create a steampunk arcade table based on this little beauty here, the Vectrex. Uh, game system which came out in the early 80s and is very unusual in that it actually has its own CRT that the computer controls directly and that means it produces very straight sharp lines and it's just a bit unusual anyway so one of the big unknowns that I had was whether I could actually create my own joysticks because I wanted to build the joysticks into the arcade table and that is why I thought you know what I probably need to make a prototype and that's where this came about now Vectrex joysticks are actually unusual in that they are analog. So whereas normally you move the joystick around and it's either left, right, up, down, there is no subtlety to that movement. Well, on a Vectrex, it's actually analog. So that the system actually knows how far you are moving that stick. So it's a different kind of joystick. And actually for me, it fits nicely into this steampunk Victorian theme, the circuit diagram for a Vectrex joystick is actually in the service manual, which I have a copy of. Uh, this is what it looks like. And actually, it's not that complicated. It's a few resistors, a few variable resistors, and then the actual joystick itself. The buttons are very, very straightforward. So I decided I needed to create my own circuit board. So as I mentioned in the previous video, I ordered some of these, which are fantastic analog, modern analog joysticks. They're 10K uh, resistors absolutely perfect for what we need. Um, I then bought some of these, which are project uh, prototype boards. And as you'll see, they've got holes in them. They've got a grid of holes. They've actually got strips of copper going horizontally, joining up those holes. I designed a layout for that board based on the circuit diagram that I got from the service manual. I built it. And the next challenge I had was actually connecting to the Vectrex itself. Now, the Vectrex actually has nine pin D sockets, which back in the day were a fairly standard connector for joysticks. And what I ended up doing was buying two of these. So these are actually listed as Sega Genesis extension cables. Crucially, they've got the D nine pin plug on the end, which I thought would plug straight into the Vectrex. And they were very inexpensive. They were actually less than two pounds each. So an absolute bargain. What I didn't know for sure was that all the pins were wired, but I thought uh, it was worth a punt. Unfortunately, when I came to put them into the actual Vectrex, there was actually a physical issue. And if you look here, you can see the difference between the existing controller and the uh, new cable that I had bought. Uh, it's basically just a profile issue. I did have a go with a Stanley knife. It wasn't good enough. So in the end, I got the hacksaw out. And if you look now, this is what the end actually looks like. It's not very pretty, uh, but it is absolutely functional. Um, I got my meter out and I worked out what pin was connected to what. Thankfully, all nine pins were connected. And I connected it to the board and then connected my joystick up to the board too. I plugged it in and to my amazement, the bloody thing only worked. It was, I mean, it didn't even need any calibration. It was working brilliantly. I then thought, do you know what? I need to put this into a, in some kind of box because I need to make a full prototype with buttons. So I went shopping. I found one of these, as you can see, very inexpensive. I rummaged through my box of arcade parts, which I'm sure you all have, and I found some buttons. I then measured the top of the box and I used some design software again just to work out where the holes were going to go for those buttons and the joystick. I then printed that out, cut it out, and used that as a template for my pilot holes. And then I drilled the holes in the top of the box. Top tip if you're going to do this, put wood underneath the lid as you're drilling through and then you get a nice clean cut. I used the color of the joystick as a guide to drill my mounting holes for the joystick. And then I drilled bigger holes and then I screwed the joystick to the lid. The buttons were very straightforward. I screwed those in. They were very, very close to the bottom of the box, but they just about fitted. 
And as these were separate buttons, I didn't bother with a circuit board for the buttons. I literally wired them directly to the cables. Next task was to plug it in and test it. And you know what? Everything was upside down. And I realized that I probably had the joystick upside down when I was testing it before. And because of where I put the joystick, I couldn't rotate that. So then I had to unsolder everything and resolder it the other way around. Not a big problem. I also discovered a couple of buttons were back to front, but that was easily fixed because I could just take the spade connectors off and switch them around. And then I have to say, I just enjoyed the joystick for a bit. It is fantastic. I'm really, really pleased with it. So one final refinement, these switches actually take five volts and light up and the Vectrex actually supplies five volts to the board. So I've just taken the five volts and powered those switches. Okay, so I've actually got the test software running on here so you can see the joystick working. So I've currently just got the joystick that came with the Vectrex plugged in and that's actually displayed on the left bit here. And as you see, that's all working fine. But weirdly, the right-hand joystick, which is not plugged in, is actually moving as well. Uh, you've also got the buttons here, one, two, three, four. Now, once I plug in my joystick, you'll see that that now centers. And look at these, look at these cool buttons. And as you can see, it works lovely. So I'm just running player two now. A bit hard to play from this angle, but as you can see. So there you go. It really works. Now, one thing I would say, and this is me being really picky, is that these joysticks are analog, but the Player 2 games only deal with the joystick as though it's digital. It'd be fantastic if there was a version of this that actually took the analog input. Now, I don't know if you're watching, but if you're able to knock one up for me, that would be amazing. Now, I have to say, I am really falling in love with this a little bit, actually, and I really don't want to dismantle it. What do you think I should do with it? My other half thinks I should um, stain the wood. Uh, it's also been suggested that I might sell it. And in fact, there's another suggestion that I should actually make a few of these because they are such great little joysticks. I'm also thinking about making a more detailed video on how to make this joystick if anyone actually wants to do it themselves. Let me know if that's something you're interested in. Now, moving forward on the bigger project, how do we make this steampunk? Well, I've got a few bits that I've ordered. Here is a crystal top and I also have here a brass light pool and the idea here is that we put these two together and they replace this shaft. One challenge I have is actually how I connect these two together. Um, I was thinking a threaded uh, bolt but actually it might be as simple as just sticking it with glue. Again, it'd be interesting to know your thoughts on whether you think that will work. Um, but that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you've enjoyed it, do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to be notified when new updates on this project come up, please do subscribe, hit that notification bell. And if you wanna encourage me to get this project done quickly, buy me a coffee, link's in the description. Also in the description is the circuit diagram and the board layout. I will see you on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.